like to thank those in charge of the arrangements here for the privilege of saying a few words about Jerome. First, basketball. You've heard how he played a vital role, and you're going to hear more about it in our winning a couple of conference championships. When I think of Jerome, I don't think of his rebounds or his defense or his scoring. I think of the way he related to a loose ball. He's the best we ever had. <laughs> when Stu Inman and Bucky Buckwalder finally amicably settled their differences and we agreed we were going to draft Jerome Kersey, we did so and then brought him out to our rookie camp where Coach Shaq Ramsey said, he, I don't think he's quite ready for the NBA, but we sure don't want to lose his rights. He's a good player. And he suggested that we try to send him to Europe for a year and retain his rights. So we approached Jerome about that, and he said, hell no, I'm coming to your training camp, and I'm going to make your team. And he did. <laughs> it's been well documented how we played a vital role as he improved each year, finally becoming a starter and then played a vital role on that great collection of teams in the 90s that won a couple of conference championships. Now, we're supposed to talk a little bit about non-basketball items today. And one of the things I remember about Jerome is the day he walked into my office with a snake around his neck. And I said, get the hell out of here with that thing. And he did, and I said, don't ever come back unless you come back without it. And that's the way it was. <laughs> I also remember a couple of trips we made with the ambassadors. One year we went, started in Pendleton in the morning and for some reason wound up in Boise, Idaho. The people in the office who arranged those trips didn't know a darn thing about geography in Oregon. Anyhow, one year we wound up in Bend and we met with the Blazer sponsor in the morning and then went and had uh, a meeting with a group of young boys, about 12 in number, at this facility where they were trying to get their lives back in order. And we met with them, and the kids, I remember the one I dealt with, uh, was trying to get a crime erased so he can eventually join them, uh, graduate from the school there, and then get in the military. Finally, we had lunch with these kids and had a wonderful time, and, it was time to go. We had to get to our next appointment. I said, Jerome, come on, we're going to be late. We've got to get out of here. Jerome wouldn't do it. He spent a little time with every kid in that place, and they up, and we had no idea that the media was there, but the upshot was there was a full-length picture in color of Jerome talking to one of these kids on the front page of the Men Bulletin. The Blazers couldn't, find, couldn't buy that kind of goodwill for millions. That was Jerome. Those of us who worked with him got to like him. We got to know him better and fell in love with him. I can't say it any better than this. He was a great guy and a great human being. May he rest in peace. As you may know, I've been around a few trailblazer teams myself over the years. And... <laughs> Thank, Thank you. It's Jerome that we think about today. And when Jerome came to us in 1984, as Harry explained, I had a feeling myself that that young man was going to turn in to something very special. And by golly, he did. But what he talked a little bit about his tenaciousness out of the basketball floor how relentless he was, and how he inspired his teammates night in and night out. And those great teams in the late 80s and early 90s under Coach Rick Adelman, who was with us today, and it was Jerome who got that gang going many and many a day and night. He said in these words, that I found. I have only slipped away into the next room. I am I, and you are you. 
Whatever we were to each other, that we are still. Call me by that old familiar name. Speak of me in the easy way which you always used. Put no difference into your tone. Wear no forced air of solemnity or sorrow. Laugh as we've always laughed at the little jokes that we enjoyed together. Play, smile, think of me, and above all, pray for me. At this time, I'd like to introduce a gentleman that Jerome knew for a long, long time. Jerome was a man of many talents, of course, not let alone out on the basketball floor. And when he was on the court, Jerome surprisingly revealed one of his talents to his teammates one night a few years ago. Trailblazers were facing the Detroit Pistons on April the 4th, 1989. I think a lot of you will remember this. As the teams lined up for the national anthem, Jerome broke away from his teammates and joined longtime friend Andy Stokes for a powerful duet that left his teammates and fans wondering if there was anything he couldn't do. Well, we must have Andy Stokes come up and sing a song for Jerome and all of us. Andy Stokes. Charles, thank you. Andy, great job. Great job, my friend. <sighs> Grandma Kersey, Mr. and Mr. Kersey, friends and family. Terry Kersey, your family, I am so sorry for your loss of a great man and a great friend. They say that a true measure of a man is in those who he has touched. And we all know Jerome touched a lot of people in his lives. One of the great things about me coming back home this year was having an opportunity to talk to Jerome, uh, reconnect with my dear friend, and we had a lot of talks. And some of the things he shared with me, first, uh, how he uh, was just in a, such a great place in his life, how he loved being married to Terry, how he loved enjoying spending time with Mackenzie, Brendan, Maddie, and of course his daughter Kiara. And JK, you know, you just couldn't stop him from that huge JK smile when you talk about his little bundle of joy, and that's Harley. He, uh, anybody ever seen a picture or seen him hold her, she was truly special to him. You know, he talked a lot about looking forward to spending a lot of time with his family, watching his family grow together. And, well, my friend, you still be watching them grow. You'll be watching them from above, and they will be carrying their, your spirits with them throughout their life. Grandma Kersey, first of all, ma'am, know that you uh, you should be so proud of the man you raised. Um, you did not get to experience it firsthand, but this city and this state loved your grandson. They, uh, they consider him uh, as their own son. And he will live in their minds and hearts forever. Amen. 
Let's talk about drones, Blazer family, teammates. And I've said this before, as you talk as a teammate, Jerome was the best teammate you can ask for. He played with enormous energy and passion that was contagious to all of us. His peers respected how hard he played and competed. And they know when he strapped it up and stepped it in between those lines, they better be ready for 48 minutes or they were gonna lose that battle that night. I want to share a story with you guys, take you back. 1990, game seven in this building, against San Antonio Spurs. Down at that end of the basket, San Antonio Spurs had the ball offensively. This is a very heated game, back and forth. They made an arid pass that looked like it was going out of bounds. Jerome, with his attitude of never quitting on any play, never taking a playoff, chased this ball down, grabbed it before it went out of bounds, had the wear for all, turn around and throw it at the other end of this court, catching Clyde Drexler in full stride, Clyde then catching it and going on and finishing. We went on to win that game and went on to go to the NBA Finals. That team grew up together. That team had it. Had that special bond, that brotherhood that if you play sports, you want. You want to have that guy next to you know that he's going to go to battle with you. That we all will carry with us for the rest of our lives. I want to share one more story with you guys. I was blessed to have Jerome on my coaching staff when I was in Milwaukee. And, uh, you know, Jerome would be in charge of a particular coaching drill in regards to a box out drill or, uh, and you could just see the guys just wasn't putting in the effort. They wasn't doing it the right way. JK as JK can only do it. Stopped it, jumped in there and said, look guys, this is not done the correct way. We gotta, I'm about to show you guys how to do it. And he'd go right in there with his attitude and his energy and showed them how to box out with the determination that only JK can do. And we uh, will definitely carry that with us forever. You talk about Jerome in this community, his legacy in this community, and it will last forever. Just wasn't his favorite charities that he poured his heart, his heart and soul into. It was also the day-to-day -day contact he had with people how he was so giving of himself and his time. I'll share with you guys a story. My wife was driving home, and obviously this was after everybody had gotten the bad news. Everybody was calling in the radio station to just share their stories and how Jerome had touched their lives. This lady called in and just said, I, I just happened to meet Jerome at a random store. He didn't know me from nothing. I just walked up to him and said, Mr. Kersey, he said, yes, I am. <laughs> he said, you are my, she said, you are my son's favorite. He said, you sure? And um, being Jerome, the way Jerome was, he gathered that lady's information. The next day, when you know it, he went to her house with an autographed basketball, took photos of the young man, and just share the time with a young man who just honored him and respected Jerome for what he brought every day. And that's, that's Jerome in our community. That, that's how much and how many people he touched. I was so grateful God gave me last Tuesday morning with him Two old warriors talking about our broken down bodies. <laughs> uh, representing a team and a town we loved. Talking to kids about a brighter future. 
about appreciating those who blazed the trail before them. It's a moment I will treasure forever. Well, my friend, the good Lord had called you, but you don't have to worry about being a second round pick in his draft. You are a guaranteed lottery pick. Love you, bro. Rest in peace, JK25. Good afternoon. My name is Tracy Rose, and I had the tremendous honor of calling Jerome Kersey my friend for the better part of 30 years. When I first started at the Trailblazers, Clyde, Terry, and Jerome were already there. Right after I started, Kevin Duckworth joined us, and shortly after that, Buck Williams came along. To remember that time, that very special time in Trailblazers history, all you have to do is mention those five names. Clyde, Terry, Buck Duck, and Jerome. You say those names and any Blazer fan immediately remembers exactly how exciting that time was and how awesome the basketball was in this building. At that time, I had the great fortune to watch Jerome Kersey be a hero on the court, but I had also the great privilege of watching him be a hero in the community. He was one of those special athletes that never forgot where he came from. He lived and modeled the very values that was instilled in him by his precious Grandma Kersey, and he made us proud every day. And from the moment he signed that very first contract, and throughout the rest of his life, he made giving back a priority. I've dug deep over the past 12 days to remember, to try and remember every special moment I shared with Jerome. And there are many, a lot of them were on the court, but most of them that I remember that stand out the most are the ones of him doing his magic in the community. And as you've heard, it wasn't just the community work, but it was with the people, whether it was his family or his teammates or the people that he worked with or complete strangers. His work will go on and on. I don't have enough time, obviously, and I think Todd would be a whole lot happy if I didn't tell all the stories. But there are two in particular that I would like to, to touch on today. This man, his, his appearances that he would do for the team were just the beginning of what he gave back. His giving ranged forever. He would do the school visits, like Sean's mentioned, in the basketball clinics, but he also worked on political campaigns. He would support the arts. He supported youth sports in general. He supported the Humane Society. He took on very personally the battles to fight cancer, heart disease, diabetes, and MS, because those were things that he felt very, very attached to. So as you can see, if you didn't know it before today, he was as much of the warrior in the community as he was on the court. The two stories that I want to share with you today are two that will really give you, from my point of view, what I think really defines Jerome Kersey. The first one um, is my favorite story, and I've told it a few times, but it was back in 1992. Take yourself to June 1992. We were on our way to play the Chicago Bulls, the second time we were in the NBA Finals in three years. This team, these guys, were like rock stars in this community. I often said I didn't think that the Beatles would get any more of a response than these players. People would come running after them in the community. And, and they were so under demand. Um, and uh, we were on our way to the finals, so it was hands off. Nobody asked these players to do anything. They were all focused on basketball. I was sitting at my desk, and Jerome called me, and he said, hey, I'm, I'm in the parking lot. I need you to bring me down and autograph basketball. Get a shirt, a cap, anything else you might have. 
um, bring them down to me. So I put a package together and I went downstairs. And when I walked out into the parking lot, it was Jerome, but not just Jerome, it was Terry, it was Clyde, and it was Buck, and it was Duck. Jerome had met a woman in the store and she had told him a story about a child who was a huge Blazer fan and he was in the hospital. So Jerome immediately called his brothers. He gathered them together and met at the office. I gave them their package and they went on up to the hospital and spent the afternoon with this child. That was Jerome doing what Jerome does. <laughs> My earliest memory of working with Jerome in the community was at the Columbia Boys and Girls Club in North Portland. I had the privilege of going to the club with Jerome and Terry. And when these guys showed up, they were like the Pied Piper. The kids would come running from everywhere. When I thought about what Jerome does and means for this community, it automatically reminded me of these times because Terry, grew up in the clubs back in Wisconsin, and the clubs are very near and dear to him. Jerome didn't have a boys and girls club in his hometown, but there was something about the clubs that made him feel at home, and there was a, something about these kids that made him see himself in them, and he knew that he could have this influence on them to show them that anything is possible, because that's what happened with him. When we... Thanks to Terry and Jerome and their work with the Boys and Girls Clubs, they inspired the Trailblazers to contribute to the building of the Blazers Boys and Girls Club on Northeast Martin Luther King Boulevard. And I'd like to make sure that the Kersey family knows that that building today stands in part because of the work that Jerome did. That is his legacy that stands there today. As I think back on the times that Jerome was most happy and proud, three of them are uncontested. The first one was any of us that were around him at the time when he found out that he was going to be a father. He was born to be a dad. Jerome Kersey could not be in a room with a baby without holding that child. So when he found out that Kiara Kersey was coming into his life, that's the moment the moon and the stars got hung for Jerome Kersey. I don't have to tell you, Kiara, but he loved you more than life. The other thing he wanted more than anything, always, was to be a husband and have a family. And although he took his time, <laughs> It was time well spent because Terry Kersey, you took him out at the knees. He loved you with all his heart and you gave him his family. And just when you thought it couldn't get better for Jerome, Kersey along came baby Harley. And that's when we all saw Jerome experience pure joy. He was so happy being a grandfather. His life was perfect, and his life was complete. In honor of JK25 today, I'm going to close and just ask all of you, let's never, ever forget where you came from, and always remember to be kind. <laughs>